two-time Masters champion, three-time UK champion, and four-time champion of the world, the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. <laughs> the reigning shootout champion who earlier this year claimed the players championship the pistol mark allen <laughs> it is a fail your choice Marty May. for what should be to play to a finish. The winner there plays the number one seed, Judd Trump. No conviction in three. that shot at all from John. And you feel that there wouldn't be many times that you'd be saying that about John. He didn't really hit it right. He wouldn't go where he expected it to either. A bit close to the right cushion. Not going to cost him anything. Except it's going to hurt him like that last frame. Undoubtedly would have. Maybe he's not quite recovered from it. Yeah, it's sort of been the story the last season in a bit, really. You know, he's playing well. He's playing very well at times. But then just the odd thing happens and just maybe struggles to, to get past it. Yeah, I mean, look, the thing with John is he's in this tournament, isn't he? He's in the top 12 on the one year. He mentioned that before the match. He's doing something right. But given he's, everything he's won in the game, it's been a while since he has won anything, so... He's setting a high standard for himself. I assume that that wall will go up after this frame. There are a few, few hopeful people on the other side uh, watching on the monitor. You might see it with their own eyes in due course. Yeah, that was a lot at stake on that shot, lot riding on it. Cuba going up towards reds.
Well, that might give Don a bit of renewed hope because it was definitely a chance. He might be able to pot this red up the table into the top left. It seems to go. Yep. Signs have been unsettled in the last couple of frames. Eight. She never lost the previous, but did. Now this has turned up. Yeah, and he's a man who's stolen so many frames down the years. Unlikely positions. It sort of happened to him a little bit today. Aye. Right. But still only two frames in it, of course. Yeah, I suppose being 4-1 up, it kind of doesn't feel like just two frames, does it? That's the worry. Sixteen. The one thing he didn't want to do was move that red from the middle pocket. Screwing a series of small extensions on the butt of his queue there. Seventeen. Deserves to be on one here. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. He'd have to be really up against this red not to be. 21. Yeah, he's fine. No, the shot deserved it as well. Let's push the black save, which will annoy him. But of course, he can win the frame. 22. Without the use of the black. Yes, and it feels like for his own self esteem, really, he needs to. If he can make a nice frame winning break, then it just uh, puts what's happened to one side. You can't survive this long at the top of sport like snooker without being mentally strong. Remember, John Higgins has been in the top 16, the elite group, since 1995. Never dropped out. Twenty-eight. Now here we are in Manchester. Think of Oasis, great Britpop band. That was that era, wasn't it? And that's when he entered the top 16 as a teenager. Thirty-four. Yes, he just recovered out of a slight mistake that he'd made two shots in a row. He'd Drifted out of position, but not now. Forty. Forty-one. Yeah, never mind Oasis. It could still be a happy Monday for John Higgins, despite his travails.
46. Fifty-three. Fifty-four. He's kind of taken the scenic route a little bit during the course of this break, but it's still ongoing, at least. 50. That wasn't clean either. <laughs> Feeling the pressure, but uh, digging himself out of a hole and getting back into the match. 56. Well, this red, and Mark Allen will need a snooker. Yeah, it's been a good effort this so A couple of, you know, gone astray positionally. The odd pot wasn't clean, but he kept going. They kept going in. And John Higgins, despite losing a third black ball frame, he's going to close to within one. What a thrilling start to the tournament this is. Two terrific players. They always seem to have close matches. It was 12-11 on the head head to Allen coming in. And could well end up going the distance 64. here. 64. Higgins' his highest break, 85. Of course, he's closing 70. in on a 1,000 centuries, 993 to his name. Cheers. 71. Yeah, and getting on the black, if this goes in, there's every chance he'll add to it. 78. 79. Yeah, this is a tricky one, in fact. 86. Quite a tricky pot from there. 86. Well, the so he is 86. The the thing is he made a frame-winning break. 86, so we're back to only one in it. John Higgins rallying impressively there. Allen's lead cut to 8-7. He broke off, he caught the blue full in the face. Well, he's played the old uh, plain ball break off shot. <laughs> well, it worked with a bit of luck, but there you go. He's um, clearly not happy with the break off because a couple of times the red came up the table earlier, then he hit the blue, as Dave said. Now he's gone the old Eddie Charlton break, which was uh, plain ball. He's becoming more and more of a Disadvantage to break, I think, these days. And you'd always elect to break in a match because you could get your opponent in trouble. Now, whether it's the different balls they use, lighter or just that players knock in long pots more frequently, I don't know. But I'm not sure it is an advantage.
No doubt in my mind that Mark Allen's safety of the two has been better today. More consistently as planned. Kept John mostly down that end. In trouble. John has made the odd error. Yes, he was asking Paul Collie to have a look. There's just a little bit sticking out on that right side, but he's not playing it anyway. <coughs> yeah, they can't be split on much uh, tonight, including overall table time. seen all sorts of different types of frames. We've seen the big breaks. We've seen, of course, some real battles, including that 57-minute seventh frame. There's the pot success, live pot success, so that's effectively before snookers are required, and again, nothing to choose between them. used to these battles because of course uh, all matches this week best of 19 the world championship qualifies best of 19 and the world championship itself of course they increase in length as the 17 days goes on yes and of course we're seeing matches over two days here aren't we and the Gary Wilson 5-3 up over Mark Selby concludes tomorrow world championships any other event like that, where you wake up with a scoreline of a match that's ongoing. That is a good shot for me, is this time. Place on the right hand side. Could be quite a bit of snooker left in this match from here, given frames might start to uh, become more drawn out as the tension ramps up.
He lost control of the red once he hadn't potted it, and it could have left more than he has. The balls have gone pretty safe. Yeah, I mean, the last ball Mark Allen potted in this match was that black, actually, to lead 8-6. 21 minutes ago. Whatever was flying around, I don't think he's flying around any longer because John Higgins has uh, stepped in. <laughs> One result he has had today. Very opening up of all the balls that shot. Very attacking. <laughs> he's desperately looking for cover and he's got it. So Mark Allen nodding his head as if he's just witnessed a good shot, but actually it was quite a risky shot that John played. The Reds were going in all directions. Of course, this is a, a new venue for snooker. We were here for the mixed doubles at the weekend, but uh, right from the off this afternoon, big crowd in, and uh, what a thriller they've been treated to. Sort of slightly shifted back Higgins' way in the last few minutes, you feel. Alan looking to protect this red near the pocket. I'm not sure we can get through to the... Sort of Slightly to the right side of that red as we looked at it. Pot it. The other red might be in the way. <coughs> Are you playing the conventional safety shot here or try to pop the other red? No. We might be playing the red off another red. Clearly that channel has not left the, the red to the left corner. An intriguing battle here on this red. Who's going to leave it on?
foul. Yes, that was what I was saying earlier. I wonder John if John was going to try something like that to clear the red or pot it. I don't suppose he ever thought he was going to go in off into that pocket with the red over it. So, ball in hand. His long game has been a bit in and out today, but this is a really big one. Foul. Oh dear. Mark Allen four. Well, how about that? He's got he's got the keyboard can put it anywhere in the D. And somehow where he decides to put it. Foul. Yeah. Just brushed the green with his sleeve. Yeah, I don't think he knew he'd hit it, but clearly Paul Collier was right on top of it. I don't think it moved, but it doesn't have to move. Meanwhile, 27 minutes since Alan Polly the ball. Well, let's see foul. Potentially could be big. One. Obviously, Paul Collier, the referee, is right on the spot. He's actually looking out for it, of course. Quite an unusual one, isn't it? That you know, he decided to put it there, so he didn't ever foresee hitting. Four. The green with his sleeve. There it is again. He looked at it as well. He seemed surprised when it was called. Of course, the other thing to see briefly is that Mark Allen, when he came to the table, he couldn't put the. He didn't have ball in hand because John had put it there and he had to stay there. Yeah, I mean, of all the things, you wrote a list Five. of things that could have happened in that scenario. That probably wouldn't have been on it, would it, all of that? But it's got Mark Allen in. It was a great ready knocked in. And now, what a chance. All these could have been Higgins's, of course. Twelve. Yes, he's just about okay. Always the worry he'd hit that red full 17. on seventeen. Not be on anything. It's a pretty wonderful chance, actually. I mean, the black, when potted, pots to the left corner. I mean, spot. Eighteen. feeling that's probably the ball of choice now the angle on this red is the easiest color to get on the black 25 Certainly, 26 is available. It's strange, he only looked at it after he'd played the shot before last. So, I think he was fully aware that it was available.
33. Well, we'll see how many he makes, but it's not always about the actual size of the break necessarily. It's how it began, and, and it was just such a strange start to proceedings with Higgins fouling unexpectedly. Just as he seemed to have the sort of psychological upper hand in the match, even though he eight seven down, the way he'd won the last frame, Alan hadn't potted a ball for nearly half an hour, but it's maybe just swung back again. Thirty-four. Well, one more time. This is a different angle, and well, on that angle, you can see he does he does catch it. I, mean, I didn't doubt Paul Collier anyway, but you, I think you can see it with your own eyes there. Oh, absolutely not. No, no way in the world. Paul Collier was right there. You know, often you see a foul and someone's moved the ball. It doesn't matter 42. if it doesn't move. It, it's just about the contact with something illegally. Well, he's been playing a lot of shots at close quarters. Already rolled in a couple of shots ago. 49. Another one here. No doubt he's given, given his full attention. Going over the black. Not simple. I think because 50. he plays those shots so gently, <laughs> the speed, it just gives the pocket every chance of accepting the ball. Mistake, and he's not there yet. Meant to completely miss that bit on the right. Typical Mark Allen, very gutsy, determined to continue. Yeah, and he got just high enough on the blue, the red by the pink now, and <laughs> red colour. And uh, 63. He's won the frame. Doesn't quite tell the full story of this frame, though, does it? This break. How he came to the table. Very 64. unusual. It was a great initial ready knocked in. Regardless of what happened to Higgins, he hadn't potted a ball for nearly half an hour. 60. It's already 70 in front. One snooker needed this red. He's surely going to make it 9 7. 70. Eighty-five. Eighty-six. Ninety-three. Well, the red stays Mark out, Allen, but the damage really truly done by Mark Allen, 93.
John Higgins fouling that green with his sleeve. My word, it was costly. And now Allen is one away from the quarters. He leads 9-7. to stay in the Tour Championship. Just the key moments have sort of gone against him in this match. Obviously, the three black ball frames and then fouling that green with his sleeve and not getting another shot in the frame after that. One. Well, if he is going to make this comeback, an early in, then the sizable break here just might set him back on track. But losing some of the frames in the manner in which he has always make you think it's going to be your day. I think anyone can overcome it. John can. The frame before which he won. Three. But that break of 86 was quite fluent, wasn't hanging around. Well, I suspect some Four. of the same here. Just get on with it. Try not to overthink. Eleven. Twelve. Well, that would have seemed very cruel had that red gone in. Yeah, the black only just made it. Nice. Looking at other things, but that black nearly stayed out. The red nearly went in. It certainly would have been cruel. It's a tricky little shot here, though, with slightly hampered queuing. Fairly narrow pocket opening from there. Didn't do anything. Flat on the shot, did he? Try and do anything positionally too ambitious. Uh, you can see the <laughs> annoyance 20. as the blue stays out. Yeah, I mean, the shot before, yes, the red was a little awkward, but. Didn't try and get anywhere near straight on the blue because he's worried about missing the red. Problem is, at this stage, you never know when that could be your last shot in a match. Well, he won't be. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll take that back. What a fluke. What a fluke. Well, everything going against Higgins now. He's going to take advantage, but that last shot didn't pop the green cleanly. Keyboard does not travel quite across as far as it might do. And he knocked it into the center of the pocket. Still got that red to left corner if he wants it. But he doesn't seem to be looking at it even. Mark Allen, four. Well, everyone's looking all down the line. Whether we can get to the red, the answer seems to be no.
Foul. And a miss. Mark Allen, four. Yes, it was a rather surprising red, I thought, to try and hit, lay up to. It's not as if that red was close to a cushion. Often the way you would roll up to a ball close to a cushion, out of harm's way, but it was in open play. One. So Mark Allen refusing that red and playing the snooker. Paid dividends. Seven. Eight. Pink spot is now clear when he knocks it in. Back on its own spot. But this is a live chance to close out a match, which he at one point trailed 4-1. Fifteen. He's not straight as he'd like to be on this red. He was definitely heading 22. north. Whether he can dig in and play on the pink to the same pocket. Low on the cue ball. The sort of thing he does very well. You know, he has close control. He's good at his little holding shots. Although he's straight on the pink, I think. Why well, he's displeased by it. No angle to play with. Twenty nine. Thirty. Now there's a couple of reds which will pot to the left corner. He wouldn't have minded a little bit further up on this, but he can probably drop it in and just land on a red. With Mark Allen, the cue ball never seems to travel very far when he's in close position, when he's break building. 36. <clears throat> 37. Again, I don't think there's a huge angle on this. Just the wrong side of that straight angle. Now what? He's building up a nice lead, but he wants this frame to be one at this visit. The match to be over. So the plant, which is not dead set by any means. No, they're way off, so he's going to have to do a lot of straightening of the second red. It looks a missable plant. Some plants are unmissable. It does not fit into that category, this one. 
43. Spring in his step is he on that thing to middle? If so, the end of the match could be very close. Yeah, you always look at the body language, don't you? He looked happy with where he'd finished. Maybe not here, though. Could have been better on it. As you can 50. see, he needs red and reasonable size colour. Yeah, just play the little cannon to the pink 51. to leave himself on it to the middle. And this is the ball that should put Mark Allen into the quarterfinals. It's a lovely little cannon, wasn't it? And he does that so well. Little shots that he plays. Never more 57. so than during the course of this break, actually. Crucial stage. Very much a touch player. 58. Well, these players' series events, they're for the elite. They're very difficult to win. Ronnie O'Sullivan and Neil Robertson are the two players who've won all three, the World Grand Prix, the players of the Tour Championship. Mark Allen, of course, has won the World Grand Prix, he's won the players. Can he complete the set here this week? He's becoming increasingly difficult to beat. He's very good under pressure. 65. He's won three black ball frames in this match. He's made a couple of centuries, some other big breaks, key breaks as well, including the one in the last frame after the Higgins foul. And once again, he stepped in here and taken the match out. Very impressive. 66. Yes, he can make exactly 100 here. I don't suppose that's right at the top of his list of to-do things, but he still can make it. Yeah, it's been 73. a real battle today. John Higgins has given everything, just come up a little short. Various things have gone against him, clearly the three frames he lost on, 75. The, on the black. The first of them, frame seven, was the, you feel the biggest, because it could have been 5-2, he could have been away. Yeah, lovely nudge. Now the century's on. And then when you lose two black ball frames where both players have shots at the black, all comes down to that one ball. Third one... Should never have ended up on the black. John should have won it prior to that. All these things are hurtful when you lose. Well, we've been playing just a minute short of six hours. 87. It's always hard fought between these two. You always see all sides of the game. And in the end, it looks like we're going to finish with a third century for Mark Allen. He finishes in style. 100 exactly frame and the match, Mark Allen. Warm words from John Higgins at the end. So it's Mark Allen who advances to the quarterfinals.